How's it going? This is Joe Intel, and this is another live stream. Let me know if you guys can hear me in the chat. So I'll be over here making sure that everything is good. But um, yeah, so let's just kick it off. So today I'm gonna be unboxing a few things. This I'm very excited about. This is the Wharfdale Denton 85th anniversary. So this was sent to me. I'm excited to open it up and listen to them. So I wanna just share that experience with you guys. Um, let's see, what else? I hear sound, says D Grizz, what's up Kyle? Um, yeah, just let me know if everything's good as far as sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so, hey Lance. Yes. You mind uh, getting me some water, please? Where's your mug? Uh, just a glass right there. All right, so, what's up, what's up everyone? Let's see here. So I was sent these wireless active noise canceling uh, in-ear monitors, headphones. In-ear monitors, yeah. From, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. From Phaeton. Dude, this is the smallest cup ever. <laughs> ah. All right, from Phaeton. I, I think I'm saying that right. And uh, so yeah, let me just read off some quick specs from, from the box. Wireless active noise canceling. Um, and the model number is the Curve BT120NC. Uh, it's Bluetooth 4.2. It says, uh, It'll cancel frequencies under one kilohertz. So low frequencies, main, mainly probably for like airplanes, you know, so you hear that like rumble. So I don't know if you've ever been on an airplane where you put on your headphones and it, you hear that engine rumble, it's pretty loud. So it's supposed to cancel that up to 95%. Um, you can take calls with it. It has a play, pause, back, forward, volume up, volume down. One hour of battery life with just five minutes of charging and uh, sweat and water resistance IPX4 and it has a little vibration notification if you get a call. All right, so, all right. So there it is, I don't know if you guys can see that. Nice packaging here. And it says Phaeton. Um, okay, let's see here. Pop these out. So I'll give an update next time uh, when I do another live stream. Or if you guys have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll give you guys an update. So here you have the headphones. I should say headphones. Um, Bluetooth earbuds, I should say. So it says left and right. All right. Cool. Um, let me just test something. How do you turn this on? I see a microphone here. I see left and right. All right. Pop that in. Turn this on. All right, so it's powered on. All right, battery is full. Device connected. It's talking to me right now. And so this is <laughs> noise canceling. Hold up. So I can hear my air conditioning right now. Let me see if I can hear it with this. Whoa, that's weird. All right, well that's cool. So I gotta test out the sound quality on these and see how that works. But like, just from this test right now, I can hear my air conditioning, but when I pop these in, like just the sound just went away. It was kind of a weird, weird sensation. And I haven't tested too many Bluetooth speakers. I've, yeah, I really, or not Bluetooth, um, noise canceling headphones. But uh, yeah, they seem pretty cool. Let's see what else is in here. So more stuff. Somebody in here says, uh, uh, open the big box, okay. I'll read all the comments in a second. But uh, I'll leave a link to these if you guys are interested. Let me see what it says here in the browser. Uh, so they're on Amazon here. Let me just pop over here. Chrome browser. Yeah, these are it. So that was pretty inexpensive, 58 65 for the white ones and I guess they have black ones. Yeah, so I'll leave a link to these. What are the reviews on this? 24, okay, not bad. How about this one? Okay, yeah, same thing. All right, cool, well, uh, yeah, there it is. Let me just go back here. All right, so fight and curve. Let's see what else is in here. 
Okay, so it's a USB, just a re regular like micro USB cable. And one, two, looks like three different sets of tips for different size ears. So I got huge ears, so I'll probably have to change that out. But these felt okay. Anyway, well, thank you to Fightent for sending these, sending these over for me to unbox. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on those. Let me know if you have any questions on these. Put these aside. Boom, turn it off. All right, there we go. So how are you guys doing over there? What do you want me to do next, huh? Anything in particular that you'd like me to do? Let me know. Let me see who's in here. We got D Grizz, Kyle always in here. Um, D Grizz says I have an SVS NSD seal 12 inch, it's pretty nice. Zombie says what's up, how's it going? Uh, so Zombie Bites again. Brian, what's up? Uh, Robert McConnell, Break the Loop. Says uh, the Fight 10 headphones have pretty good reviews. Uh, yeah, Fight 10 is a Korean company is what it says on the box. It says designed in Korea. Don't know where it's made, but yeah, weird name. Cool. What's up? Have you ever listened to the Quiet Comfort 35? Or You know what? I've only listened to those in the store, so I don't really know. I'd have to test it. Break the loop. Andy Lee. Hey, Andy Lee. What's up, man? Andy Lee's awesome. Um, supporter on Patreon. Thank you very much. Yeah, they get special treatment over there on Patreon, so FYI. Uh, D Grizz says, open all the things. Well, this is probably what you're here for. It's what I'm here for. Uh, so just give me a second. I'm going to take my time with this one. <sighs> ah, water's good. All right. So let's open this up. And see what's going on. So the folks at Wharfdale um, sent this over. It's a pretty big box here. All right. So let me see. How should I do this? Mm, this is pretty huge. I don't want to drop these. I might need your help, Lance. All right. So this side, huh? This side. Anyway, anywhere you can get by. All right, it's my buddy Lance over here. You've probably seen him before. Hi. All right. Let's go ahead and cut this open. I don't want to. I don't want you guys seeing my like address. Coming to my house like, hey, I saw what you said about those bows. What's up, man? No, What's no, up? I don't need that. I don't need that. Here. Um. From the store demo, how much it cancels noise? It's pretty impressive tech. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I tried. All right, so I tried these five ten ones before, um, just real quick, just to make sure everything was working, you know. And um, yeah, it did a pretty good job. I tried to try it with like babies crying, because as you know, I have two kids. Uh, one kilohertz and below it can cancel. So the baby crying is like higher than one kilohertz. So that's probably not good to cancel that out because there's probably a reason why they're crying. <laughs> All right, here we go. Pop this open. What do we see in here? A bunch of foam. Uh, okay, so I think the proper way is to oh, like yeah. turn it on the side. We're supposed to like open the bottom and there's like this proper way. But uh, as long as I don't knock over my laptop, I'm cool. And if I don't drop the speakers, that'll also be a good day. So, all right, cool. So this down, make sure it's all on the table. We have a pretty skinny table here. All right. All right, here it goes. Everything's in place. All right. Ah. Stay over there. All right, let me see any questions here. Um, Angry Will said something that was uh, retracted. I think this thing automatically like censors stuff, so it's, it's not me, I don't care. Break the loop, do uh, any of your friends ever hit you up going like, hey, you have some speakers lying around and you don't need them? You know what? I wish they did. Nobody ever asked me for speakers. I don't think they care about speakers. They're probably like, they probably think I'm weird for like being into this stuff. But um, yeah, not really. 
Not only do you absolutely want to cancel out baby crying, uh, you want to wear a blindfold when that happens too. Here, no evil, see no evil. Oh, you got Very a gift. Oh, oh yeah, now some of these gloves. come with these, these gloves. I'm not going to put on gloves for this, man. Are you crazy? <laughs> it makes it slippery. It's not like, like the SVS were shiny, so I needed white gloves. But uh, I'm cool. I'm glad it came with it. That's kind of cool. White gloves and then and a nice little envelope. All right. Wharfdale, 85th anniversary, limited edition. Damn, look at that. This looks like the Constitution was written on this thing. It's like that old paper. <laughs> it looks like Declaration of Independence. I think some... Who signed this? Some old presidents are have their signatures on here. But yeah, there it is. Piece of paper. Looks super old. Michael Jackson gloves. Put the gloves on. Oh, hell no. I don't want, I don't want to wear these gloves. Look at these. Michael Jackson gloves. Come on. You really want me to wear these? <laughs> it's for you guys. Better send me a super chat now. I'm not doing this for free. You crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? For golfing too? All right. Um, all right, so this is gonna be upside down. Nicely packaged. I guess we'll see the speakers if they're all torn up. Hopefully not. All right, so they come in this nice bag. So I, I think I opened it the right way because I'm not gonna do that. I gotta do it like this. Can you guys see? All right, cool. Gloves are off, man. <laughs> I didn't even see a super chat. I'm taking those damn gloves off. So how'd you guys like my uh, recent videos? I did that Bose one just because it was lying around, so I'm like, eh, I gotta do a video. And that thing blew up. I'm getting like hundreds of comments a day, and I try my best to answer all of them. As you can tell, I don't know if you've noticed, but I go in there and I try to at least like acknowledge you guys, like at least a thumbs up or a heart, or if I don't like comment, I'll give it a thumbs down. But um, yeah, I try to answer everybody there. So here we have like a string tie. Boom, looks like a shoelace. Do you right. need both, or you want me to put? Let's just put uh, put that down if you yeah. can carefully. All right. Here it is. Which way is it facing? It's facing you guys. It's gonna be upside down right now. All right. Boom. Bam. Old school. It's like undressing. Look at that. Dang. These look like. I don't know. Like. Really nice. <laughs> better with the gloves on. Just with the gloves on? Okay. <laughs> All right. So here it is. Move that aside for a second. So there's the front. It looks like super old school and I love it. Let me see. You guys get to see it before me. I haven't even looked at this. Oh, wow. Wharfdale right there. And these are pretty heavy. All right. Um, here's the back. There it is. These, uh, these look pretty cool too. Different configuration than what I'm used to seeing. And you see the two big ports in the back. Wharfdale Denton 85th. Yeah, these are, these are some of the bigger bookshelf speakers that I've, I've seen. So I probably want to hook these up right now. You probably want to know, get an idea how they sound. I'll do a full review, of course. But, um. How do you take this off? Oh man, I gotta see this, but. Uh, let me see if I can get this front grill off. Okay, there it is. All right, cool. So yeah, they're, they have these little pegs here and there is the front. There is the grill, wood, right? There it is. And it's, it's weird, it's like, kind of like padded right here too. It's very weird, like this is kind of, has some thickness to this thing. All right, put that aside. Here's the front. There it is. These are handsome. They remind me of their old school ones. If you've ever looked at Denton, you'll see some of their first speakers. They kind of look like this. 
Um, this is wider than the 80th anniversary that they came out with like a few years ago. What, five years ago? <laughs> um, yeah, this is a six and a half inch and a one inch looks like a, a soft dome tweeter and it's behind a grill, which is good because if you want to run this without a grill, you can and with, you don't have to worry about kids poking in the tweeters. I guess they could poke in this part, but um, it looks like a some kind of carbon fiber type material, rubber surround, and this is, yeah, man, a lot of different materials here. This is, I don't know what this is, it feels like metal. Yeah, very nice, very nice, there you go. Let me go through the comments here and see what's going on. Um, Real Mariano says, Gracie says, hi, Papa, hi, Lance, hi, Gracie. That's my daughter. Hi. They look big. Have you ever damaged audio equipment while opening? I have not. I'm a professional. These speakers have some nice packaging. Uh, that's cool late 60s, 70s look. Clips. Uh, nice looking speakers. Pretty large too. Yes, going to need the, some beefy bookshelves. I think I have some that I made. Yeah, I think it'll fit nicely on there. Um, let's see. Let's go. Let me go back to the browser here. See what else is is here all uh, right let's look at this together so this is from music direct and they sell for $8.99 a pair so they're not cheap they're not like super expensive but not cheap for sure so having said that my expectations are high not super high but higher than uh, if I were to review some $200 speakers right so $8.99 yeah, there they are. Boom, boom. Yeah. I'll leave a link to these also. Okay. Let me see what else you guys are saying in the in the chat here. Um, beefy, are those are bigger than Elac UB5s? Yep. Do you have to send the speakers back to Wharfdale after your review? Review? I hope not. <laughs> yes, usually. I dig those binding posts. Same tweeter as the Elac. Real men like big, thick baffle. Thick. Thick. 6.5 woven Kevlar. Those tweeter guards are, do impact the sound. If you don't have kids, it's measurable too, um, says Bill. You know what? It depends on whether they designed them with that on, right? Because when I talked to Andrew, Andrew Jones, he said that he designs it with that metal on, but he designs it with the outside grill off. So... Something to know. Um, cheese baller. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, sorry, get it. Kyle Dykes is out of here. Sorry. All right. Take care. Parker, very sexy cabinet. Um, Wharfdale about to double the price of the Eli QB5s. <laughs> yeah, you're paying for the name. Lance is listening. Okay. What's up? Uh, all right. You guys want to see how it looks next to the UB5s? I have the UB5 slim, so hold up. All right, there we go. UB5 Slim. Height-wise, they're pretty much the same. The UB5 Slim is actually deeper this way by about, by about half an inch to the back. But, um, yeah, you can see that. So this one's obviously wider. Wider by like a good inch and a half. Uh... Break the Loop says, I dig the Street Fighter 2 arcade machine I see in your videos. Yeah, I built that a while ago. That's like a little bar top arcade. Very fun, fun, fun to build. Let me see. Here's how, it's, how wide they are. You see that? All right, cool. So I'm going to hook this up. Lance, could you hook up? Can you take the other one out? Yeah, got gotcha. you. Let me point this over here. You guys follow me. Okay. I think this will do right here. Man, that's perfect, right? Yeah. Too bad it doesn't match perfectly, but it's all right. These are some these are some stands I built. All right. So these are weird 
Yeah. Wood? wood? Is it like wood wood? Ooh. What, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Give it time. There you go. Can you guys see over there? There. All right. I'm gonna have to hook these up. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can see. Let's throw it over here. All right. Uh, so Bill says, what do you think? Big bassy sound and rolled off highs for this one? Uh, I would expect the Wharfdales to have a rolled off top end because that's typically Wharfdales things. Those are upside down, bro. Come on. Oh. <laughs> My bad. Lance says, uh, is Lance an audiophile too? Says, break the loop. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, just install it upside down. <laughs> cool. Uh... <laughs> what amp are you using? So I'll probably just use this SVS Prime uh, Prime Wireless Sound Base because it's like 150 watts a channel, stable down to four ohms. That's another thing. I didn't see how many ohms these are. Somebody do me a favor and check, see what ohms they are. Denton 85th anniversary. All right, let's plug them in. All right. Well, I'm gonna leave the grill on. You know that. You wanna know how many ohms it's at? Yeah. What is? How many ohms does it say? All right. I don't want to get flagged here. Four ohms. Does that sound right? Four ohms. Oh, these are four ohms. Okay, so that's good that I have it on that because uh, that can handle four ohms no problem. All right, so I can't play this for too long because I'm gonna get flagged. Let's see. Hello. And no. Zone, title, Kendrick Lamar. Some people don't like it. Nobody pray for me. Pray for me. Some people don't like hip hop. I'm sorry for you guys. I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances, but that's a nigga with some counter. One second, I gotta mute you guys. <laughs> yeah. I gotta mute you guys. Um... All right, let's see here. What, uh, okay, four ohm, four ohms, four ohms. Uh, Cheese Baller says, I recently ordered a pair of Swan M200s MK3s. So stoked for them. I bet you are. They don't lack volume, no they don't. Uh, I bet these things are big low end with those rear ports and the driver. Um, yeah, so far, so far, so good. All right, so let me let me try another song here. I just don't want to get flagged. 
Uh, my music. Let's go to. I'm gonna play some of that, um, some copyright free music for you guys so you can hear a little bit off this mic. It's not gonna be very good, but whatever. All right, this is my to my uh, my test track that I usually use. Okay, gotta mute you guys. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. All right. So, yeah, you know what that reminded me of? Is it reminded me of of old school speakers, like in a good way. You remember how like old school speakers used to be big, right? Like minimum, like a small speaker. A small speaker back then was like an eight inch driver, and it typically you'd see like a lot of three way designs, and it rem reminded me of that type of sound. You know what I mean? Like just very full. And uh, nothing, like compared to the SVS, let's say, for example, the SVS are super detailed. Like it'll tell you like more than you want to know about the track. This is, you know, it's still detailed, but it's just more relaxed and more of that sound signature that you'd expect from like the ELAC UB5s. So uh, yeah, it's a big box, right? Six and a half inch driver. So, I mean, it sounds bigger than a six and a half for sure. So yeah, I'm excited to, to really test these out. These are already uh, broken in before they sent them to me. It says right there on the box, like broken in. So if you believe in that stuff, they put on uh, put in like, you know, however many hours they thought was necessary before they sent it to me. So that's that. Let me, I don't know if you guys want to hear some music. I can put on some copyright free music and you know, you guys can hear it from this mono, well, I don't know, the mono mic. If you want to do that, let me know in the comments and I'll do it. I don't think that that's very useful. I believe sound demos are useful when they're done right, but um, I don't know. If you want me to, I'll do it. If not, then that's cool. I'll move on. Yes, no, maybe so. All right, let me read the comments here. Uh, <laughs> she's baller. Uh, okay. Copyright free, a test track is not, okay, so, uh, okay. All right, so, you guys, Color Ghost says, do it. What is Denton? Denton is, I don't know, it's, I, I guess it's one of Wharfdale's lines. So, they have the Wharfdale diamond, and then the Denton is, like, their old school, like, vintage look, I think. So... Uh, can you sh can I show us the SVS app a little bit? Yeah, I'm I'm wired up right here though because I'm live streaming, so I can't really like move too much, and I hope I don't disconnect anything. But um, mm, probably not a good idea. Let me see. Look it up. SVS Prime Wire Prime Wireless. It's this little thing. This right here. Yeah. Yeah. Move it back. I can play some songs, I think. What is Denton? Can you show us the crappy town? Okay, Denton, crappy town in Maryland. All my speakers are, are old school three ways with 12 inch drivers. See, that's what I mean. You know, Color Ghost knows what's going on. Those old school, uh, you know, speakers, they could play loud. They typically had some paper cones, so if the, the foam hasn't deteriorated, then you're good to go. They'll probably last forever. 
Uh, like the lighting in the room. Thank you. A little late. What's the wattage on these speakers? Um, let's see. What is the wattage on these? Specifications. It's uh, so frequency response 45 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's pretty good. So it says 20, 20 to 100 watts. 88 decibel sensitivity, and each one weighs 19.8 pounds. Yeah, I think just based on what I heard so far, it sounds more similar to like a tower speaker than a bookshelf speaker as far as bass goes. All uh, right. What else are you guys saying in here? What year did you get into home audio? <laughs> Um, I don't know, probably like when I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. So I'm, I'm like closer to 40. So you do the math. Eric Sven says, all my relationships are old school three ways. Good job. Good job. What do you think about that, Lance? Yeah, to each his own. To each his own. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Let me see. How can I play some copyright free music on this thing? Bluetooth. Okay. So let's try it. Some of that music. You know what? I'll just play NCS because that's all copyright free. Might not be the music you like, but it's all I can do. NCS. Boom. All right. Let's see. This is all kind of like electronic music. So don't judge me based on what plays here. It's just what I'm allowed to play on YouTube. There it is right there. I'm just kidding. Um, how do I get to this? Close, stop playback. Okay. Retro look is dope. Joe's early impressions, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, it's too early to tell. I mean, from what I can tell, so here's one thing I noticed, like, I feel like they're, uh, like, you have to really perfect, like, how they're placed. That's why I got up and, like, moved one of them, because that track is At Last by Etta James, and uh, what I usually look for is where she is, right? And typically, she's supposed to be in the center, but slightly to the left. And when I was listening right now, it was like further to the left than I'm used to. And it made me wonder if like there was a level mismatch there, like if one was louder than the other, or if for some reason the speaker was further back or, you know, so I kind of towed it in a little bit and it kind of fixed it. But these might be very, very tricky where you have to like place them a certain way. So that's the one thing that I noticed. Better than the bow setup? Yeah, I'd say so. How do I get this to play? Can you get this to play on the Bluetooth over here? Um. No aux cord? Use my iPad, but oh, I'm not sure. Never mind. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Mega Black? I don't know if this is. Um. I mean, I'll try from this other phone that I have. What else you guys got going on here? Let me see. Can you read me some of the questions here so I can answer them while I'm doing this? If you don't mind. No, not at all. So I, I'm, I'm at uh, Eric's event. Said these speakers are, are uh, thick doggo. That's cool because that okay. one. That's cool because I'm also into home audio and I'm only 13. There My you go. My dad gave me his JL PB10 about three years, three years ago, and no, now I guess. What's a PB10? Now it I sounds have like my a own subs. That sounds like a crazy sub if it's JL Audio. JBL PB10. JBL or J no, it says oh JBL PB10. Yeah. You scared me for a second because anything JL Audio is pretty expensive, so I was like, I got scared for a second. Okay, what else? Hey Joe, since you said they sound like towers, I wonder how they would compare to those Warfdale Crystal 4.3s you like. 
those crystals are about half the price good question that's going to be tough you know what i mean that's the the tough thing about what wharfdale is doing they have all these different lines and uh they have low lower end lines uh more budget friendly lines but those are so good that it's going to be scary for them right because there's their stuff is so good that it's kind of hard to justify spending more but i guess if you're looking for this look then you have to buy them the question is is it better than the bose setup <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say so. JBL PD10 is a subwoofer. Okay. The loop. Okay, got it. Play a bass test. This is not, these aren't subs. You guys are crazy. All right, let me change the Q&A here. You guys feel free to ask me anything and everything, and I'll do my best, my best to answer them. Let's see. I'm still trying to get this paired up. Um, so I'm supposed to be reviewing this SVS, and uh, there's a lot that it does. Yes, break the loop, Andy, yeah. Not showing. Yeah. My wife is saying you're not showing the chat on the screen and that's correct. No. All right. Oh no, it wasn't about it wasn't a crazy sub, it was a hundred watts and never turned up pretty loud. There's a load up load of port noise. Okay. Okay. Got it. Ooh, do you have a set of L S three? slash 5a to compare to the dentons borrow the aesthetics of it yeah uh no i don't and i don't have any harbeths or anything like that but uh yeah it does look like that old school british design uh i don't have anything to compare it to <laughs> um thick chuffing okay um yeah so i don't have anything to compare these two and it was kind of kind of weird because i when they wanted to send me these, I'm like, oh, this kind of remind me of the LS35As. They kind of remind me of those. And I kind of felt bad because when I look back at the original Wharfdales, they actually are just a replica, or not a replica, but uh, a nod to that old Wharfdale Denton look. So I didn't mean to compare them to something that wasn't their brand. They look pretty sweet. Man Cave speaker seems like the old school garage speaker, laid back but dressed up. Uh... It's okay, you might have to mortgage your house to afford Harbeth. Well, that's what it is. I can't get this Bluetooth thing to work, so sorry. I don't want to spend all night here. Let me try to turn it off. Eric Sven, did you say what amp you were using to do this review? Um, yeah, I was using the SVS Prime wireless sound base. Green Play says, what are some bookshelf speakers? What are some bookshelf speakers? Uh, bookshelf speakers are speakers that typically can fit like you know on a bookshelf without it looking too weird um, there are like so you have bookshelf speakers that are maybe like this big typically right and then you have some that are called stand mount speakers that are meant to go on stands like you they wouldn't fit on a bookshelf and those are bigger so those would probably be like this tall and then you have floor stander speakers that you know they're meant to stand on the floor. What right? are some good bookshelf speakers? Good bookshelf speakers. Well, for good bookshelf speakers, you can check my speaker leaderboard. Um, I'll see if this will work. I don't know. I'll leave a link here. bit.ly forward slash speaker leaderboard. Boom. Those are the ones I like in the order. Uh, this was the leaderboard before, but everybody said it's kind of kind of whack. So I changed it to a digital leaderboard. Hopefully you can see that. If not, it's bit.ly forward slash speaker leaderboard with capital S and capital L. Uh, do you still have the little SMSL app? I do. What are your thoughts uh, on comparing to U, UB5s? I will have to see. I'll have to see what I think about them. Bill, can confirm all ELAX sound good right now? All right. Roar of the Tiger, being these Dentons are very old school, I would expect they sound more like OG KLH or Advent speakers, but more efficient, just saying. Yeah, KLH, I guess, used to be a good brand before. And um, for some reason, like, I remember in, like, in, like, the late 90s, they fell off hard. I mean, I remember I bought a Kenwood receiver, and it came with some free KLH speakers, and those things were, like, uh, they were terrible. Terrible. Break the loop, Andy. Uh, so... Joe, what is the best speaker you've heard? Price, no consideration. 
best speaker I've heard. I don't know because like I haven't had like the most expensive speakers plugged in on my system and that's usually how I gauge, you know what I mean? Because if I hear some speakers, let's say if I take some of these and I put them in a room that's perfectly treated and like different like amps hooked up, it might make these sound a lot better. So it depends on the room. I wouldn't gauge based on that. But um, I've heard, you know, Wilson audio speakers that are super expensive, probably like hundreds of Gs, I don't know. I've heard the Bowers and Wilkins 802Ds that are like 30 Gs. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I got those here, they would, they'd probably sound better than all my speakers. They better, right? Um, so yeah, I've heard some pretty expensive stuff. I've heard, you know, the Kef uh, LS50Ws, but at the store, so not here. So yeah, hopefully I'll start getting more and more variety here of inexpensive, expensive, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me if they're expensive or inexpensive. I'll review them all the same. All right. All right, all right. Joe turned us all into UB5 fanboys. Yep, yep. I don't know, I don't know. We'll see. Some of these speakers that are coming up are, you know, twice the price. So I'm gonna be reviewing the SVS Prime, oh no, SVS Ultra bookshelf that are a thousand bucks a pair. Now keep in mind the UB5s are $4.99 a pair, but they go on sale for like $3.50 a pair, right? These are $8.99 a pair. So we'll really see if it's true that the UB5s can punch above their weight class because these are definitely above the weight class price-wise. Size-wise, these are bigger. This is a six and a half and the UB5s are using a five and a quarter. So, mm. John Durda, all right. All right, so hold up a second, hold up a second. Um, what else do we have, Lance? My phone's dead. Thank Your phone's dead, okay, so John Durda. Thank you, John Durda, for, for always taking care of me. He's the one who sent these to me. So he says, original Denton came out in the late 60s, so he's gonna school all of us right here. And I like the fact that you're in here, that's really cool. Uh, Denton came out in the late 60s, LS35A in the 70s. Oh, okay. All that being said, I love them both. Denton 85 definitely has more bass and can play louder. LS35A has a bigger sound stage. Okay. So, yeah. John, Jonathan Durda, you're the man. All right. Break the loop, Andy. I like the high-end Wilson audio speakers I've heard. I bet you do. <laughs> In general, do you prefer a more balanced analytical speaker or a more musical speaker? So by those, I assume that you mean balance and analytical. Balance meaning it's flat. Analytical meaning maybe it is uh, has tipped up uh, top end. I'm kind of assuming as far as what you're saying. Or a more musical speaker, which I'm assuming you mean like relatively flat, but maybe, uh, you know, the highs are rolled off slightly. And uh, I think it depends. I think it depends. So in this particular room, I would prefer a more musical, as you'd say it, musical speaker where it works well with my room, where the highs are rolled off slightly. But maybe at my desk, I don't want it to be rolled off, right? If I'm, if I'm trying to get an accurate sound, I want it to, to be more flat. Hopefully that answers that question. What else we got here? Have you heard? Uh, here, can you read these? <laughs> it's hard to keep track. You Here, you read. What time is it? Okay, cool. You read. <laughs> All right, go. Where are we at? You were. Balance analytical speaker. Good question. All right, there. Okay. Have you heard of Pioneer CST? 2100 k three-way speak oh k three-way speakers i have some and they sound pretty great i do i've never heard of those but i'm sure if you showed me a picture maybe i'd, I'd i've seen them before retail in australia 1499 dollars by jules 327 what these speakers rec hey. okay bill my favorite pair of old school speakers i've had were ads l780s tacky dome mid and tweeter tacky i don't know what that means okay Eric, exactly. Eric Sven. Uh, Jonathan Dara? I don't know how to Durda. say it. Durda. Durda. Durda, there you go. No, you're the man. Keep up Keep up the work. Oh, keep up the nice work, Joe. Thank okay. you, thank you. 
Luke M Tech, have you ever heard of the Viva Viva BT yeah, speakers? Yeah, you know what? I've, I actually have some Viva um, drivers that I was very impressed with. So you're talking about their Bluetooth speaker. I have not heard that, but based on what what you know, what if Viva used to be another brand, or I think they got bought out by a different company or something like that. But yeah. They used to be, make some good drivers. Jonathan Durda, and if you ever want to hear some new LS3 slash 5 Yeah, LS3 5As. Yeah. yeah, I do want to hear some new LS3 5As. How do I get some? <laughs> Break the loop. Is there a product out there that you're itching to review? Itching to review. You know what? Everybody always asks me about Kef stuff, but Kef doesn't show me any love. So I don't, I have speakers for days. But I wish I could compare it just so I can answer all of the questions as far as like, hey, is this better than a LS50? Is it better than the L, you know, X300, X whatever? Jules 327, yeah. yep, just checked. Bill tacky, meaning they were actually coated with sticky resin. Sorry, you couldn't clean them. Oh, wow. Oh, I thought you meant that they were like tacky looking. Okay. Selt uh, B5E. Never listen to Sonance? Never or ever. Oh, ever listen to Selt? My bad. I'm like. Ever listen to Sonant's SB46L? Uh, no, those are like what? Are those in wall speakers? I know Sonant's is known for their in wall stuff. I don't know. Uh, John Jonathan Durda, I I want to I want to know about this LS35A. Please let me know. Luke Mtech, uh, I have a pair of Infinity Beta 50 speakers. Have you ever heard them? Infinity, you know, they're like. There's an unlimited amount of speakers out there, and I haven't heard all of them, so sorry. <laughs> I know a lot of people ask me, like, hey, have you heard this speaker? And my answer, like, 80% of the time is no. 90% of the time is no. Just because there's so many speakers, you know? They've been making speakers for so long. Yeah. Thick Dog, I like that name. Thick, Thick Dog. dog. <laughs> if, you ever have, if you ever have the time, you should Google them. I really like them, especially because they only cost me $100. And I don't have the money to buy new and higher end ones. Okay. All right. Hey, so so Lance, he works with me here at my shop, and I've uh, been getting him into audio a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. I can see differences now. Hear differences. So, so I let you hear those. Uh, what are the ones that I let you borrow? Uh, Fluence AI forties. AI forties. What do you think of those? They're nice. I mean, when I got them, I was blown away, and now that I've listened inside and like here and at home. I feel like they're perfect for what I listen to in my room size. Uh -huh. Yeah, I enjoy them. I have yeah. nothing negative to say about them. AI, AI 60s are out now. Those should be coming in soon, so FYI. Ask him some questions about audio. Ask him, uh, as somebody who's new, ask him some <laughs> questions. I'm going to get some water. All right. Oh, okay. Hi, by the way. And for those who... Someone asked if I'm an audiophile as well. Yeah. You want a water? No, I'm cool. <laughs> Uh, what is your overall opinion of the SVS? Is that for me? Or? Probably for me. <laughs> yeah. I Which like, SVS? SVS Amp, SVS Sub, SVS Prime Bookshelf, the SVS Ultra. Those are the ones I've been testing. A Awa guy, Wharfdale or yeah, Wharfdale Den 80 fits. Are they good near field or plus two meters? I don't know. Near field, I don't know. They look huge for a desk. I you, wouldn't put them on my desk, but... Luke Mtech, what do you recommend for Adobe Atmos speakers? Mm, are you talking about the up-firing modules, or are you talking about ceiling, ceiling speakers that you're going to put up? Because uh, it would depend. Um, typically, I would recommend actually putting speakers if you can. And in that case, I would say whatever matches your other speakers. Uh, Celt B5E, all Celt B5E, just the brand. What you okay, SVS the brand? Oh, SVS well, they're brand. internet direct, and so they're able to provide high quality products. And because they can cut out the middleman, they're able to, you know, charge you less for them. And so you get a lot of value when you would go, when you go with SVS typically. So, Bill, have you found yourself listening to music differently when you try to look for sound quality? Listen to, um, listen to music differently when I try to look for sound quality. Well, I do find that I listen to the same songs over and over. That's one thing I've noticed. And you know, you already know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I'm playing these same yep. songs that uh, even my kids know, these like tracks that I'm playing. And so that's one thing is I'll play music over and over. Just because let's say if I play a new song, I don't know 
I don't know if, like what it's supposed to sound like. So I don't know if it's missing bass or if it's like too high in one end. I don't know. I don't have a, a point of reference. So I typically stick to some music that I know. And that's the one thing I've noticed is I kind of like listen to the same music over and over. Eric Sven, just looking up the SVS sound base, looks like a good deal. 150 watts into 4 ohms for just 4.99. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a lot of power for not a lot of money. S uh, he's replying to someone else. Okay. CN, oh my god, CNHHNC. Infinity Beta 50s for 100 are very good price. Not a bad set of towers. Certainly compete with, certainly compete with most current towers in the 600 to $700 a pair range. I believe you. Infinity's always made some pretty decent stuff, right? Infinity, JBL, they're consistent over the years. Dave Euler says thanks. Bill for the new guy. Oh, uh, me? Mm. me new guy? What's it? <laughs> okay, Bill, let's try it. Luke M Tech, yes, up firing. Luke M Tech, SVS makes great speakers. So, Luke M Tech, uh, I think I answered your question. Um, just get the speakers that look good on your other speakers if you're looking for up firing that's it's it's kind of weird right it's kind of weird you're bouncing sound off the ceiling so just make sure that it's made for it don't try to like repurpose some speakers because there is like a special crossover that's built into the, the up firing modules and they usually have something that's kind of blocking the sound from reaching you so you want the sound up firing up and bouncing off but you don't want the sound to hit you directly so make sure you're using some Speakers that are purposely for uh, up firing. Break the loop. I actually like this question because I want to know too. If I want great speakers for music, but also want to use those speakers for my home theater, are there any considerations I should have versus speakers strictly for music? Um, I would say if that's the case, if you're looking for speakers that are going to be good for both, what I would recommend is get some tower speakers just because when you want to switch to two channel audio, I know for myself, I don't want to use my sub. I don't want to have, I don't, I don't want to have it up mixed to, to Dolby Atmos and have it play through all my other speakers. If I'm listening to two-channel two audio, typically music's two-channel. I mean, there's some stuff that's mixed in 5.1, things like that. But if I'm listening to two-channel audio, I'm gonna change it to the two front speakers, and I don't want to hear a sub. I don't want to hear anything, and so I want to hear the bass from those speakers. So make sure that you have speakers that can play as close to full range as possible. Um, and then, of course, when you're playing a movie, those can cross over and you can have your sub take over the bass frequencies and all that. But I think that's the thing to look for. Or of the Tiger asks, room pla or says, room placement should be critical with these dentons, not just because of rear ports. Near field slash de desktop use not recommended. Stands are necessary, placed away from walls. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alpha Con, which is the best sub ever? Best sub ever is the... Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard all the subs. In order to answer that question, I have to hear every single sub ever. But uh, the best one that I've heard here in my room is this, the, the PB, no, no, sorry, SB2000 from SVS. Um, best one I've heard in my car are the JL Audio W6s for sound quality. Uh, yeah. You know, I would like to hear some other subwoofers. Yeah. All right. 78 sound. I have Fluence as well. SIG towers? SIG towers? Signature towers? Okay. okay. Cool. Oh, gosh. Young Ho Moon. Is creating YouTube videos your full-time work? No. This is my shop here. And so I have a couple businesses. But, um, yeah. I run a couple businesses. But uh, I, I want to do this more than I do the other stuff. Color Ghost. In... Infinity once made extreme high end, then got bought out by Harman, um, yeah. and went straight to the bottom. Okay. Thick Doggo, for a good computer 2.1 system, what would you recommend? Good computer 2.1 system. Uh, go to, go to my kit. So go to kit.com forward slash Joe Intel, and you'll see my favorite uh, computer setup. So I would say if you have some money to spend, the Vanitu T zeros with, you know with a sub or you can spend a little less and get the uh what is that dayton audio 2.1 uh, dayton audio dta 2.1 bt2 and that's a 2.1 channel amp and then get some pioneer bs22 lrs boom and then get you know 
get like make a voxel sub. Try Jason, that. Jason Hefner, best sub ever, the one you own, of course. Yes. <laughs> Break the loop, Joe. Do you have the dent? Denton 85th on stands right now? Yeah, didn't you see them? They're over there. They're on stands. Can you not see them? I mean, it's not really showing. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boom. Those are some stands I built, by the way. Congratulations to me. <laughs> Is that uh, a weird flex? Yeah, a little bit. Just, just, just a tad. <laughs> Celt B5E. If you can build your ultimate home theater setup, what do you run? 5.1, 6.1, 9.1, etc. If I could build the ultimate home theater setup, I'd have a dedicated theater room with like, I don't know, 150, 200 inch screen, something ridiculous. Just, just like, just so I could sit back and I'd have to turn my head a little bit. That'd be perfect. And then I just want speakers freaking everywhere. I don't know. It's true. He told me this before. I would probably say like, I don't know, however many speakers as <laughs> possible. 80, oh, okay. 80 speakers. Boston Bum 2 I like my Vanitu T0s with sub for my computer. That's what I just recommended right there. Matthew Lem, have you ever heard of Tecton speakers? I've seen quite a lot about them on the web, yet never heard of them. Uh, yeah, those are the ones with a bunch of little drivers. I can't say anything about them because I've never heard of them, but I have seen them in person. They look kind of crazy. Um, when I was younger and just getting into this stuff, I always thought like, well, if one tweeter sounds good, imagine if I put 10 tweeters, right? And that's kind of how those tectons look. They're just a bunch of, like, drivers. I don't know. Okay. Thick Doggo, if you've ever heard if you've ever heard of Pioneer Premier 10s, they sound great if you're on a budget. Okay, I believe that. Or are those Andrew Jones designed? That's a question. Iowa Guy, have you ever... Have you tried non-near-field bookshelf on desk flipped upside down with a blanketed... With a blanketed or yoga mat on desk? I don't know, Iowa Guy. That sounds like something that, that Z-Reviews would do. He's the upside down tweeter guy with the yoga mat and all that. Techno dad, boom! Did I miss the unboxing? Yes, you did, techno dad. Um, but you're a busy man, so I understand. It's all right. Break the loop, Joe. Are you worried about your teenage? Are you worried that your teenage days of listening to window thumping bass in your car has done irre irreparable hearing damage? Huh? <laughs> are you worried that the teenage days of drug? Huh? I this chat. Oh, what I do? I'm just playing. Uh, I don't know. My hearing seems pretty good. When wow, I do I, the sweep test, how did I, I not pick up it. on that? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think I can hear fine. Let's see where are we at. Hey, we got two point one suggestion. E wow, E D I F I E R. Edifier. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a name. <laughs> Edifier. The Edifier S three five zero D B. He's just in all caps. He said it hard. <laughs> Edifier. <laughs> All right. I thought that was a model. Like. Okay. The Daily Bench, what do you know about vintage Jensen TF-3As? I have, I have like three I got for free. If you, do, if you have not seen them, look them up. All right. I don't know. I mean, um, when I was growing up, Jensen was not a great, ba great brand. It was like uh, something I'd find at like Sears. But who knows? Before that, they could have made awesome stuff. I don't know about those particular ones. So B5E, LOL. Oh, Techno Dad, where'd you go? You'll want 11.2.6. 11.2.6? That sounds a little bit weak, Techno Dad. And Tectons are awesome. <laughs> Larry Keller, you should you should listen to my six order band pass box I built with 2.8 what? 2.8 kicker. Two eight inch kicker solo barracks subwoofers. Oh, two. Tuned to 67 and 36 hertz respectively. All right, all right, that's cool. Band pass. I used to be into band pass stuff. That was that was a cool design. Robert McConnell, I dig my straight eights with my PS Audio Spout 100 on my PC. All right, straight eights, all right. Cool. Eric Sven, oh, oh, replying. Break the loop. Joe, do you have any opinion on materials for drivers, like silk versus metal for tweeters, etc.? Any general impressions you've formed from recent reviews? All right, so I would say, you know, a lot of people don't like paper cone drivers, but I think they sound very organic. So a nice stiff paper cone driver, I, I don't mind them at all. Anything that's like lightweight, so so the base is quick on it, I like. And then I'm starting to like the metal dome tweeters on these SVS. I'm kind of curious to see how it would sound with a metal dome tweeter, but with it rolled off. So these SVS are metal dome and it has a flat response or slightly rising. I'm curious to see what it would be like if, uh, you know, somebody like somebody from Wharfdale made something with a metal dome tweeter with it slightly rolled off. I'm kind of curious because I like 
they, they sound like a little crisp. I don't know. They're just more crisp. They cut through the air a little, a little differently. Thick doggo. Uh, I, I don't believe. I think that's supposed to be don't. Uh, I mm -hmm. don't believe as the ones I own are pretty old, like two thousand five. Okay. Applying. Lol, huh? Yo, Chub. Lol, huh? Okay. Roar of the Tiger. Lol. Young Ho Moon. Hey, just want to say, well edited video reviews, Joe. You have your own style, honest and easy to understand. Keep them coming. Yeah, somebody said today that they they had to to cut away because I was like cutting too much between the scenes. Oh They're yeah. They're like five minutes in. On the Bose ones. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, cut. I'm like, I'm sorry, I suck at talking. This is how I normally talk, <laughs> right? So this is unedited. You see, I stumble a lot, and I'm just like, I'm not as smooth. So I don't want you guys to think I'm a complete dumbass. So. Salt B5E and the wife says dead dead AF. Okay. <laughs> Techno Dad, I should have a 5.1 Tekton setup coming for coming in for review. I've heard the bookshelves in person. Nice. Matthew Lamb. Oh, you gonna respond to him? Techno Dad always is like telling me all the cool stuff he's doing. <laughs> if you don't follow Techno Dad, then uh, you should. But yeah, he's always like, hey, check out this cool stuff that I'm getting. Like flexing a little bit. Yeah, he's always flexing Just on me. A little me. bit. Hey man, going to CES. I'm going to CES while you're not doing anything. I'll be over there having fun, going crazy at CES in Vegas. Matthew Lamb, do you have the Lore Tectons? Uh, I'm sure it's not. Probably not for yeah. me. Alpha Con, bro, have bro have ever heard about the Indian audiophile speaker manufacturer brand? It's called Torvin. Do check it out. I can write a mail to them. We'll ask them to send a sample if you want to test their speech. Speakers, I'm assuming. I'm willing to test any speakers. Thick doggo, but if they're still great today, I have. But they are still great today. I have two running on 300 watts. I feel like you're about to sell me those. <laughs> Dave, Eiler, Eiler, Eiler. Do you remember Diamond Audio from your car days? I remember some pretty nice metal dome tweeters on those back in the day. Diamond. No, I, you know what? I I remember MB Quart was like the speaker to get inside, inside your car. Nile Sahara. I'm so sorry if I butcher your name. Nile Saharali, follow follow your reviews from India. Went for Elac B6 and loving it. Surprised the great sound from a two hundred dollar. Will gift the U. I'm assuming that's UB5. Uni Unify. Oh, Unify. Yeah, yeah, huh? To a relative for his basement den in, in New Jersey. Unify UB5. So you're giving away your U UB5s, for the B6s. Wow, that's very nice of you. I mean, I would, for me, it would be the other way around. I'd probably give out the, the B6s and keep the Unifies. But that's cool. Uh, from India, that's awesome. Break the loop. Joe, do you still keep up with car audio brands? Someone stole the head unit in my car. What What's a good brand I should replace with? You should. I don't keep up that much. But I would say get something. I'm assuming you either have an Android phone or an uh, iPhone, in which case you should look for something that has... Uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That's it. Techno Dad, LOL. Awa Guy. Have you tried sealed subwoofers? Subwoofer 101 says SVS, SB100, SB1000s, and SB2000s are painful to listen to. But what if, they'd, what if they'd have a far bigger boxes per drive diameter? Uh, um, well, uh, I wouldn't say painful to listen to. Painful in what way? I have the SB2000 over there. It sounds good to me. It's not painful in a loud way. It's not painful in a bad sounding way. I think it's a good sounding speaker. Techno dad, I got mad love for you, Joe. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Roar of the Tiger. Once Jensen bought the brand name, they ruined Advent. The Harbeth. I don't know. Harbeth. Use a metal dome tweeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. John Sueda, are you going to review the BenQ Electrostatic Two with subwoofers? I think you should. You should a sleeper. <laughs> it would be a sleeper. Um, I've already reviewed the BenQs. And I did mention that, you know, with a sub, they sound pretty decent for a desk. You know, you can't expect too much. They're small, little Bluetooth speakers. But I think for what they are, I think they're cool. Yeah. Tony says, hey, Joe, are you planning to review the upcoming Transparent 1 Encore? I bought the Transparent Zero Base on your review and loved it. I'm interested to see what improvements they've made on the new M. Yes. Uh, they've emailed me and said, hey, uh, like your review on the T-Zeros. We want to send you the, the, what is it? Transparent one Just encore and yeah, so they've reached out to me and so I'm excited to do a review of those John Sweta the speaker is cube audio 10 inch driver got it Richard Cruz 
Joe, have you tried the new S Sonos Sonos mm -hmm. app? Mm -hmm. I'm interested in pairing them with the debut B6s. I have not. I haven't heard that app yet. John Sueda, do you... Are you're... you okay? You okay? Because I'm good. You're, you're, you're off. Right? I'm good. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, where are we at? You having fun? Yeah, of course. All right. Me too. Uh, where are we at? Now I just lost my place. Uh, do you remember? Okay. John Sueda, do you remember the model number of leaked 10-inch metal drivers? Oh. Is that, was I at that already? Do you remember the model model number of leaked 10 inch metal drivers? I think they were late 50s, early 60s. No. Larry Keller. Yes, MB Quart are really nice when I listened to them back in about 1990. A little too bright for me. I ended up with Boston Acoustic 6.5 Pro. All right. Thick Doggo, gotta go. See you when. See, see you later, later, Thick Doggo. Stay thick. <laughs> 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 anyway guys suggested car coaxials with large excursion woofer suggested car. yeah i said coaxial right yeah there you go <laughs> yeah suggested uh, is that a question or is... i don't know if it's a suggestion or what but uh, I, don't, I don't argue with iowa guy theorda lopez hi guys hello um, ck what ck arsenal I'm assuming that is. Arsenal. Interested in BMW, a similar speaker to see if they're worth the price premium over others. You know, I've heard a few BMW speakers and they do have their own sound signature. So I think it's going to be a matter of you going out and listening to them because they do something. I, I haven't tested them, but I would like to see what their frequency response is because there's something going on. It's consistent across all of their speakers and it sounds a little bit different in a good way, right? In a way that I like. So, yeah, I would be interested in checking out some other 600 or 700 series. And if they want to send me their 800, that's cool too. AlphaCon, which is the best head unit for car audio and S&Q segment? My personal experience, Pioneer P99RS Clarion. Clarion. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm out of that game for right now. I used to have a Clarion before. I currently have a Pioneer. You know, I think those are, if those are still good, then I think those are safe because... Those were good brands like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I don't know, whatever. Break the loop, uh, where'd I go? Break the loop, Joe, do you see a noticeable difference in quality with a higher priced amp like SVS wireless compared to the super inexpensive SMSL AD18? Uh, can I tell the difference? Mm, maybe in feature set is the most obvious difference. As far as loudness, the AD18 got loud enough to the point where I wouldn't want to play it louder than that, right? But I think if you had a big space and you wanted to turn it up even louder, then you'd get a benefit from some of these bigger amps. Uh, John Sweet, a review Cube Audio. Sure. Are you from Cube Audio? <laughs> <laughs> Larry Keller, what, what does your subwoofer testing rig consist of? How much will I have to spend to get a similar setup? Just get yourself a U-Mic 1, U-M-I-K-1, and REW software, and that's a great place to start. Now keep in mind that when I do my testing, a lot of times people comment and say, well, you know, this is not in a perfect situation. It's not an anechoic chamber. I'm not, I'm not doing absolute measurements. I'm just trying to get an idea of what these sound like in my room, so that when I say, hey, I like the way this sounds, at least you have a reference point. So you might be able to say like, hey, your room acoustics suck, but I get why you like this one over another one. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be exactly the same in your room, right? So I would, I would recommend that everybody get some kind of test equipment, but I, I already know most people aren't gonna do that. So take my reviews with a grain of salt. Roar of the Tiger, leaks were old school from the UK. Cool. Teoda, now I know. Teoda Lopez, what's your opinion about FX Audio Branch? Uh, I, like, I like some of their stuff. You know, they have a lot of different stuff. FX Audio, Duke Audio, I think is kind of the same. The Little Bear stuff, I think it's all the same brand. And they make a lot of these like two buffers that I, I kind of like. I kind of like all these little two buffers. Now this uh, Little Bear T7, I like it as a two buffer when I'm like plugging in a phone or RCA, you know, something like that. But I try to use it as a phono preamp and it's pretty noisy. So not good as a phono preamp. So I wouldn't use it for that. I have no idea how to say your name. Cabernet, Cabernet Sober. So, Cabernet Sober Sober. Okay. Okay. How to understand by specs why some speakers need to be loud to show clarity and others show nice high, mids, and lows at lower volume. Um, so one thing to know about that, oh, break the, hey, super. super. Thank you, thank you. Always supporting, I love you. <laughs> All right, 
Um, Why others have nice highs. Okay, so I would say that what you need to understand is go, maybe after this, go look up equal loudness contour curve or Fletcher Munson curve. Just look, look up like equal loudness contour curve. And what you'll find is that our ears are more sensitive to certain, certain frequency ranges, usually the range where babies are crying, right? So that range, like our ears are, are made to hear that really well. And it's not as good at hearing bass and super high highs, right? And so to compensate for that, you'll see that, you know, this is kind of how your hearing is, right? So, oh, sorry, this way, right? So to compensate for that, a lot of times speakers have a V-shaped response, right? So that when you have it turned down, you can hear the bass and you can hear the treble um, compared to a flat speaker where, you know, your, your, your hearing might mess things up a little. You won't hear the bass as well as if a V-shaped uh, speaker over there. What else? Break the loop. <clears throat> Joe, have you been to Audio Elements store in Pasadena? I thought they had a nice display. Yes, I have been to Audio Elements. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, Joe and tell. But uh, yeah, I have a picture of their, their, their setup back there. Remember I mentioned earlier that I heard some Wilson audio. They have some Wilson audio speakers, some VTL amps, all this like super expensive stuff. And it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. Jules327, can you re can you recommend a good brand of replacement drivers? Value for money. Replacement drivers. Um, that's tricky because your drivers need to match, uh, you know, the crossover. It's really tough to just pop in a speaker and ha and expect it to sound really good. You know. Yeah. But I like the stuff at Parts Express. They make a lot of good stuff. AlphaCon, thank you so much for your reviews on products after watching your comparison video between the Wharfdale C. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, well, guy, I do not recommend headphones with slim cans. Example, Pioneer, M521, M531, closed Sennheisers. Got it. And by the way, break the loop. So thank you. Like when you, when you support either with uh, a super chat or on Patreon, that helps me out, you know, like, you know, I'm not asking for a, hey, I need you guys support, nothing like that. I make videos about speakers. I'm enjoying myself. So I'm completely happy with the current situation. All right. But, you know, if you guys want me to review more stuff, you know, maybe if I, if I have more coming in, I'll go and purchase some speakers that you want me to review specifically. And uh, who knows, I might, might open a, a hi-fi shop. So all of this, all the support will help me out with that. So... Mark Anthony says, hey, Joe, great content. Thank you. Break the loop. Joe, I've often heard that two subwoofers are much better than having just one. Have you heard the advantages yourself? Um, in my room, I think what they're referring to is a lot of times when you have a single sub play somewhere, there's going to be parts of the room that aren't getting the right frequencies. There's going to be nulls and peaks. Nulls meaning where the sound waves cancel each other. And so when you have two subs it's less likely for that to happen. So it might have a null over here, but the other sub will compensate for that. And that's the reason why people say you should try to run two or more subs. John Sweeta, John Sweta. I don't know if you should listen to them on a desk. I want to hear them on stands for the price of under 500 with a subwoofer. Recommend what about the Wharfdale with the Ben Q 150s or $100 50. You understand that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me try again. I want to hear that on stands for the price. Uh, recommend. Okay. I'll get back to that. If somebody else understands what that say, I don't understand, John. I apologize. Uh, can you, uh, Liedrich, Liedrich Lumen, can you please make a review on Wharfdale subwoofers? Thanks. Um, if John, Jonathan Durda is over there, you heard it. Send me some subs. Howard Calderon, have you have you taken into consideration that the older we get, the more we lose the upper frequencies? How do you play this into your speaker choices? Um, well, I try to I try to show you guys the graphs, right? Because that's another thing. A lot of these reviewers, if you notice, a lot of the reviewers are older dudes, right? So I have no idea what their hearing is like. So it's hard to judge for me to judge based on somebody else's hearing. So you shouldn't judge based on my hearing, right? And so that's the reason why I show you these graphs because at least you know that the microphone that I'm using has a certain frequency response. So you may not know what my hearing is, but you know what the frequency response of that mic is. And typically what I do is I'll give you my opinion 
and try to back it up by showing you like, look at this is really why it sounds a certain way because of the graph. As you can see here, the bass is bumped up, things like that. Dave Eiler, the loudness button. Okay. Loudness button, yes. The loudness button compensates for that uh, equal loudness contour curve, that, that hearing that I was talking about earlier. Roger Montemarano. Montemorano, recommendation for integrated amp to go with my ELAC Unify. Would really like to replace my 25-year-old Denton. Integrated Denton. amp, that's a, that's a tough one. It depends on what you want to spend, right? So, yeah. I mean, I, I like the way this SVS sounds. You know, I'm sure if you ask Techno Dad, he'd probably say something super expensive. What, what is he? What are you rocking over there? Oh, I think he jetted out of here. Oh, he's out of here? Okay. Uh, the Daily Bench, is KLH a good brand? Do you know of DLK? A lot of letters there. Where? KLH? Um, I don't know. I heard KLH is actually making a comeback. They got bought out, and so I'm curious to see if some of their newer speakers are better. Techno Dad, got a jet, guys. Great Q&A. See you later, brother. Alpha Con, Crystal 4 Series with ELAC B5.2s. I don't even experience it in India. Since it wasn't available, so I had I had to import Wharfdale's Crystal Full 7.0s from Singapore. It's it's really awesome for the price. I bet it is. Hey, so you got the whole Crystal Full Crystal setup. That's pretty awesome. Alpha Con, I really enjoy it. That's awesome. The Daily Bench. What is your opinion on Log Logitech versus high end gear? Yeah, I mean Logitech. They make some good computer speakers. Those are the speakers that I got from my wife when I first met her. So they still work, they still sound pretty good, and I wouldn't spend too much on them. But you, when you go into like, you know, separate speakers, it starts getting better and better, for sure. Okay, AlphaCon, when are you planning to do a review AV receivers? Well, I owe, to review AV receivers. I owe Marantz a review of their SR7012. You want water? No, I'm good. Sure? Yeah. What else? Throw them at me. Techno Dad, my landlord sold the house we're living in and we have to move. What? Please join my Patreon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Break Techno the loop. Dad, you're bad. Break the loop. Joe, any experience or opinion on mini DSP products? They seem like they would fit in a lot of people's setups and improve the sound. Heck yeah, I love mini DSP. I like I have a mini DSP 2x4. I want a mini DSP. 2x4 HD and some of their other stuff with uh, Dirac Live. I think that stuff is awesome. The only issue is it's pretty advanced, right? I don't think I would recommend that to somebody who's new to audio, but there's a lot of stuff that it can do. It's very powerful for room correction. I think it's awesome. I don't. I, I have a feeling that Dirac is probably one of the best ones that I've tried, but uh, I haven't tried uh, Anthem, the Arc, Arc stuff. Techno Dad has. He's reviewed on his channel. Mark Anthony, are you Filipino? I am. Are you Filipino? I am Filipino. Hmm. Rob Rob Trumbull. DK was com DK was a company from back in the day. I see. D DLK. Is Mark I think that's like the singer, right? Isn't that a, a singer? I don't know. <laughs> Howard Calderon. The reason the reason I bring the age issue is that my theory on Bose is that they're expensive and tuned to the older de demographic. <laughs> <laughs> They're tuned specifically. Well, if it's tuned, look, here, well, maybe. It's possible. Blows. Yeah, Rob Trumbull blows. Okay. Hey, what guy? Can we talk about female supermodels? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Anything's open. This is Q&A. John Sweeta, who is asking about drivers? I don't know. Hmm. The Daily Bench, uh, piezo comparison or titanium horns? Piezo? 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 Um, compression or titanium horn? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Real Mariano says, yes, Mark Anthony, J-Lo's ex-husband. Uh. Is that you? Break the loop. What about that chicken adobo, though? That's what's yeah. up. Yes. Don't make me hungry right now. Right. I'll jet out of here. Rob Trumbull. Hey, what guy? You remember the... Oh. Hey, do you ever have uh, longaniso? Heck yeah. I eat that, like, uh, at least once a week. That makes your breath smell the worst. Oh, yeah, you have it it's with the garlic. Best. It's you have the it with best. Garlic and uh, vinegar. Yeah. If you haven't tried it, go to a Filipino place and like for breakfast get longanisa and rice with an egg. Tastes delicious, but your breath will stink all day. Yeah, you have to get the garlic rice too. Though. All right, where are we at? Uh, who's asking about driver? Just forget the. What about that chicken? 
Rob Trumbull, Ava guy. Do you remember the... Oh, I think that's specific. Mm. Matt Hilty, I have some LS50s on my desk and they should... And they sound a little cold. Is there an affordable tube preamp that can fix that? Man, so here's a tough thing, Matt, is those LS50s are expensive, right? So I would always like be willing to recommend like some of those tube preamps that I've reviewed, like the uh, FX Audio Tube 01 and the Tube 03 with the GE JAN 5654W tubes. Uh, I think that sound they sound great. They can warm up the sound. They round out the sound, I would, I would say you know, smooth it out a little bit. But because your system's so, ex you know, since you have some expensive speakers, it kind of doesn't match, right? It's kind of weird. I don't know. I I'm kind of weird like that. Like, I wouldn't, I would I would hesitate to put inexpensive stuff on an expensive car, for example, right? You kind of, you kind of put yourself in a position, you should look at some of the more expensive stuff. Uh... Just to match. But you might, you know what? I would say try this cheap one, and if you're happy with it, then, then, you're straight. Awa guy asks, "What do you mean? I don't know what that's okay. referring to." Mark Anthony, how about some C-Sig? That's what's so familiar. I forgot what C-Sig yeah. is. It's Filipino. The Daily Bench. Have you ever played with Pro Audio? Ah, uh, not too much. Not too much. No. R Rob Trumbull is fifty product of the year twenty eighteen. LS fifty product oh, of the year. LS. Okay, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you know what's funny? I looked at those LS fifties. Right, everybody's always LS fifties, LS fifties. The Frequency response on their website says something like 79 hertz is the low end. That's high. Like I would, ex everybody says that like they have a lot of bass and treble, but 79 hertz doesn't sound very deep to me. I, to me, that seemed like it was underrated. But maybe you can give me some info on that. Uh, Caber Cabernet sober sober Joe between Fluence AI 40s and JBL 305. What's your choice for a desktop 2.1 setup with a 100 RMS JBL Arena sub? Would you consider a mini DSP mandatory for better performance? Um, so the Fluence AI40s, uh, they had an issue when I first reviewed them that they had a little bit of a hiss when connected via RCA. So that's why I didn't recommend them from near field. Um, JBL305, I think they also have a hiss problem. If you look them up, people complain about that. But what I would say is, I didn't have any hiss with the Vanatu T0s. Maybe try those. Matt Hilty, I got them used. They weren't expensive. Okay. LS50, very few sp speakers with a silicone port. R1, yeah. okay. Mark Anthony, have you ever have you ever auditioned Wharfdale Diamond 9 Series? 9 Series, no. I have the 11.1s. I haven't even, I haven't heard the 10.1s. I haven't heard the 225s. So I definitely have not heard the nines. Alpha Khan, what's the simplest difference between audiophile speakers and colored speakers? Audiophile speakers and colored speakers. I think, you know, what you're referring to is, that's not, it's, it's tough to answer that question because audiophile, when you think about it, you think that audiophiles are looking for something like the purest, most accurate sound, which means that they're looking for something that's as close to the original signal as possible. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you know, if that's what you want, you should probably look for studio monitors. And the only problem is studio monitors are designed to be heard near field. And I think audiophile speakers are meant to sound flat in your listening position. Something kind of like that. But um, it's tough to answer because there are a lot of audiophile targeted, so high-end audio related uh, speakers that are probably very colored. There's expensive colored speakers. Yeah. John Sweeta, sorry I couldn't fit the text in. I ran out of room. I wanted your opinion of the Wharfdale subwoofers, hundred dollar fifty with the Ben Q. Have you tested what sub did you see? Did you use? Um, I would say, if you're looking for, if you want the Ben Q, then you should look at those because you want the electrostatic speakers. You want to get two of them. You're a baller, and you want to take that stereo setup outside because they both have are battery powered. That's why you would get the Ben Qs. But if you're looking for the best, best, best desktop sound, then I probably wouldn't spend the money on those, right? So, you know, you can do it. You can do it. You can add a sub to those, but it wouldn't be my first option, right? So, CK Arsenal bought Fluence AI40s for my condo based on your recommendations. Enjoy it. 
Is there a significant benefit in going up to a setup passive speakers plus AVR plus sub in a small space or not necessary? Um, not necessary, but what you get when you start separating things out like that is you get to play with stuff, right? You can say, oh, let me try this ad, let me try these speakers, it's modular. You can move stuff around, you know, change out different things. You can add a tube preamp. So that's kind of part of the fun is that you're able to change stuff out and upgrade. And let's say, let's say you, you like the speakers but you don't want the app. Well, you can move the app somewhere else and buy some extra speakers for a different room. You know what I mean? So that's the advantage, you can, it's modular. Rick G says get an LFI audio to preamp buffer for the LS50. iFi. Oh, is that iFi? Yeah, that's cool. Jesse Barreto can confirm LS50 not great with bass, but phenomenal sound regardless. I own a pair. Okay. Then why is it? Look, here's the, the thing for me is they're not cheap. They're like 1200 a pair, something like that, right? And if they don't have great bass, then that means you have to probably add a sub if you want more bass, right? So maybe it's not for bass heavy music, but it's kind of funny to me. You know, those are expensive speakers. I want to hear them dig down low. In that case, would you say that the UB5s can hit lower? Because those I've measured at, I think they they say 48 hertz, but I've measured them down to 38 hertz. So kind of curious about how they would compare to those. All right, Color Ghost is my last one. When I, mm. when I demoed the LS50s, I just didn't get the hype. I didn't get the hype, though Vienna Acoustics, Elac, Focal, or Well and Truly beat them. Mm. Oh, Well and, or Well and Truly beat them. But I guess people hear different things. Got it. Cool. See you, man. Take care. Bye, y'all. Be safe. We'll do. All right. I'm probably out of here pretty soon, too. How long have I been on? About an hour and a half. Hour and a half? Oh. Okay. We're having fun. Let's see here. Better off getting a sub to complement the LS50. Whoa. There's a lot. Um... I thought the LS50 had plenty of bass and run a pair of 18s and 15s. Got it. Break the loop. You mentioned in the videos that you used to work in tech industry before you started your own business. Did you like or dislike working in the tech industry? Was it hard to make that move? Well, I ran an IT business for 10 years, my own IT business. And so that was fun. I think it all ties in, right? Like all the stuff that I do now is not unrelated. So there's nothing that I learned in that business that wasn't transferable. So I regret none of it. Yeah, I still, I'm, I'm, I'm just into tech stuff, right? So when I look at these audio files, I wonder sometimes if it's just like we're into the hardware aspect of it. And I think that's part of it. All right, Color Ghost. So guys, do you have an opinion on Focal? I run with big yammies and love diatones and old school JBLs, but the Focal tweeters are so damn amazing. Yeah, they're using that crazy like, Material, right? Um, I, I don't know. Focal is expensive, so I haven't gotten a chance to try them out. Uh, thanks for replies and sound demos. You're welcome. Yes, you always manage to help. And I appreciate all of the comments. So anytime you guys are commenting, as long as you're not hating for no reason, I'm happy. You know, some of the comments in these, in the, on the videos are just like, just like, I hate you. Yeah, I kind of kind of skip on those. Uh, skip over those. Uh, let's see. Color Ghost. I'm listening to a pair of Ebony's NS1000s. Have you ever heard JBL four inch titanium dome mid range? Wow, it's a big titanium mid range. Um, destroyed my hearing. No, I don't want to hear those. Permanent. No, I don't want to hear those. What's up, Rowan? Uh, Joe and tell are you around when they actually had audio retail stores? You know what I actually work, used to work at Circuit City and uh, Yeah, and there was a place around here uh, In Burbank that was called Speaker City and I used to go there. They moved, but they're still around um, Yeah, there were a lot of, even nowadays There's not even a lot of car audio places because all the stereos and cars are pretty good now LS 50s versus the mini Philharmonitor Philharmonic monitors okay i don't know joe a dac preamp recommendation for uh yeah preamp recommendation dac preamp recommendation um i mean i've i reviewed see you later
I reviewed the uh, SMSL SK10, and it seems to do a good job for me. No complaints. Check that out. If you haven't seen my review, go check it out. John Sweeto, the best DSP and rather go with ASP is the Linkwitz from Linkwitz Lab. You can control each individual driver and your speaker. No crossover needed, just amplifiers. Well, Linkwitz is, you know, obviously, uh, I think he recently passed away, but he's the one, like, if you look at different crossovers, one is a Linkwitz Riley crossover. So, obviously, that guy's a legend. And so, I wouldn't doubt that anything that they would make is awesome. Opinions of the Atom A7s. I haven't heard them, but they look pretty cool. A lot of people ask me about them. Yes, correct. Rob Trumbull says beryllium. That is the tweeter in the Focals. You're correct. And I think they are, you know, what is it? They're not, they're like toxic or something like that. I brought, I bought the FX Audio Tube 01 and gone through a few tests. Unfortunately, I didn't think it lives up to the hype. Sorry you didn't like it. Also, with a Tube 01, did you use the GE tubes? Because I tested it with the tubes that it came with and I didn't like those. All right, L Bree. Oh, what's up, man? Uh, just thought I'd pop in and say hello. Awesome channel. Thank you, thank you. Great stream, Joe. Thanks for answering all of my questions. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the support. AlphaCon, as far as my experience, audiophile speakers are very bright, like Tannoy's, ATC Pro, etc. Warp, but Elac, Warpdale, Emotiva, Focal, listener friendly. Good to know. Katsuki Rui, Joe, could you recommend a passive speaker for desktop PC for under 500? Um, as I said earlier, check out my kit, kit.com forward slash Joe and tell, and I have uh, some different speaker recommendations on there. Um, and also on my speaker leaderboard. So I think I've linked to that on this video. So check out the speaker leaderboard and you'll see best for desktop. But for passive speakers, you know, there's a few that I like. I like the Pioneer BS22 LRs. Joe, any experience with the Little Dot headphone app? Uh, no, but I think, yeah, Little Dot FX Audio, I think those are all the same company if I'm not mistaken. Variable output, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Rob Trump, my main speakers, okay. Norbert, Schmid, Joe, I work with John Durda. I just want to say thanks for the content you guys produce. I think it's real world review that certainly helps your users make better decisions when purchasing. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you for allowing me to do these reviews. You know, it's, I couldn't do it without you guys. And so you guys are super cool. And you know, so here's the thing. If you guys send me something to review, ask them, <laughs> ask Warfdale. Like that doesn't mean you're gonna get a, a review, a good review. I mean, that's like my policy is, you, you can send me something, but there's no guarantee of anything. And the fact that I said that to you guys and you guys were confident, like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, do what you gotta do. I like that, you know? I don't, I have companies who like, hey, we'll send you some stuff, but uh, let me warn you about this. They try to coach me, you know what I mean? I don't like that. Um, so these guys just send me speakers, say review them, tell me what you think. And so I like that. And, and the fact that they're in here, that says something. It says that they're in touch with people. They care what you guys have to say. They're, they're listening. And that's important to me. That, that lets me know that if I have a problem, I can call them, I can contact them and they'll be able to respond to me versus some of these other companies, I'll message them, I'll ask them like, hey, and they don't they don't even look at the message. So to me, that's kind of like, if I had an issue, maybe that'd be the same thing. Like, what? how do they know I'm not messaging them for an issue I'm having with my my uh, my speakers? So I appreciate that. All uh, right, let's see here. Dale, Joe, let's get to the important stuff. Never been to the West Coast. Is In-N-Out Burger as good as we hear? Uh, wife loves In-N-Out. I mean, it's all right. I'll, I'll be honest, I was more impressed when I went to Shake Shack in New York. Now we have Shake Shack. Yeah, don't beat me up for that. All right, just an average home theater guy, 2018. How do you like the sound of the SVS Prime bookshelves? Um, I, I did a full review on those, so watch my review. Um, yeah, watch my review. Brian, uh, In-N-Out is overhyped too greasy. <laughs> Their fries are pretty good though. I like them. Uh, not well done, but light well, I think you call it. Try that. All right. Color Ghost, only in so the electric ranges. Okay. All right. Color Ghost, what are you referring to when you're running a sub? All right, Jonto, all I can say about the LS50 is that despite the lack of low end, I was just blown away 
and I've demoed a lot of speakers before deciding on the LS50. Hold on, I'm, I'm really confused about these LS50s. Like I really wanna hear them in my space because if they're not producing a lot of content below about 80 Hertz, that's a lot, that's practically no bass, right? That's the normal cutoff for a home theater where your sub would cut off. So like even small speakers can hit like, you know, at least down to 60 Hertz. So I'm kind of confused. I'm, I'm wondering if the lack of bass is what people like for some reason. I don't know. I'm, I have to hear them. I'm wondering. All right. Too many food comments. I'm getting the munchies. <laughs> Jules. All right. Ron Bergen, did you, did you touch on the Fluence AI60s? Ron, I can't wait for those to come in also. Hopefully soon. And hopefully they don't have uh, any issues. Ron Trump, Ron, Rob Tremble. Thanks for having a cool YouTube show. I listen to you when, I, when packing or listening. Awesome, man. That's awesome. We're both working together then, right? You're working and I'm working. Break the loop. Joe, one company I've wanted to listen to is Ascend Acoustics. Their office is in San Clemente and they offer sound demos. Do you know of their speakers like the CBM 170 or Sierra Towers? Um, I don't want to comment on that. I've, I've reached out to them and I've had a back and forth and basically we couldn't work it out for me to test their speakers. So I don't think I'll ever get a chance to test Ascend Acoustic speakers, unfortunately, because I have had other people asking about them here. But, um, you know, I think they're not the type of company to be heavy on marketing, let's just say. To say it nice. Okay. Rob Tremble, do you like Genelex? Genelex are, are like very common around here. So I'm here in Burbank and a lot of these movie guys use Genelex to, uh, to, for their movies and, and they're supposed to be very flat, very accurate speakers. Yeah, a lot of them say, you know what, a lot of stuff sounds terrible on them because they're so accurate and so revealing. So let's see here. Another internet dealer company I've wanted to listen to is Philharmonic Audio. Yeah, I'm open. I'm look, I'm <laughs> I'm always open to reviewing all kinds of stuff. I've saw I've seen people talk about Shane, uh, those Philharmonic and um, what else? Like the boo carts, stuff like that. Real Mariano, so the wifey says, yes, in and out is. All right. Animal Style Burgers are the bomb at in and out Shake Shack is all right. I like Lucky Boys out in Cali. All food, okay. See, that's what I like. That's what I like about this channel. You know, we got people who are in the high-end audio. We got people who are brand new. And uh, I don't think there has to be a separation. Let's just, you know, we can all get along. Can't we all just get along? Uh, and so now we talk about food and bring everyone together. I think I'm, I'm gonna take off pretty soon, but let me ask, answer a few more questions here and then I'm done. So, um, free Bose sound doc, should I hop on this deal or leave it? For free? Well, just get it. You can't, you can't beat free. Dude, I'm telling you those LS50 sound bomb. I hate most speakers I hear. Uh, I, don't, I don't doubt that they sound bomb, but I wanna know how they sound so bomb if they're not producing a lot of frequencies below 79 hertz. I don't, I don't not believe you, but I, I, I need to understand this. Um, I'm running them with two Focal subs. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, thick doggo. Hey, John, back. But just for a few seconds, is there an address? I would be able to get my sub back. If you want to send me a sub to review, man, unless you're in Cali, maybe just hold off on that. But uh, if you go to my website, joeintel.com, there's a way that you can contact me there. LS50s are $9.99 right now. Dang, that's pretty low. That's the lowest I've ever seen, I think. Have you heard of uh, PSA, Power Sound Audio? I have. Um, yeah, I did mention I mentioned them in my last subwoofer review that I would like to review some of their stuff. Uh, where is your list of ratings from best to worst type deal? So that's on my speaker leaderboard. If you click on the description to this video, there should be something that says speaker leaderboard and has everything listed there. Uh, what did you, okay. Why do people love clip speakers? What makes them different? The thing about clip speakers is, uh, they have a wide range. So they have stuff that's inexpensive that you can buy at your store and they, they have stuff that's more expensive for people who are willing to spend more. And the thing about them is they have a horn tweeter and they're very efficient, right? So you don't have to have an amplifier with a ton of power to be able to play them loud. And a lot of people associate loud loud and clear, right? So they can play loud and they don't distort at loud volumes. 
they, they associate that with good sound. And I'm not saying I, I haven't reviewed Klipsch speakers here. I'm not saying that they don't have good sound, but all I can definitely say is that they can, they have a high sensitivity. You don't have to have a lot of power and they can play loudly. Yeah, so that's why I think that's part of the appeal. Uh, the worst kind of deal is the one you can't afford. Doesn't matter how good the sound is. Gotta keep the, the wife happy and your stomach fed. <laughs> yes. Awesome channel, Joe. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, Andy. Uh, Daily Bench, old Sony, good or bad? I don't know. I mean, it depends. Uh, Sony has made some pretty good stuff in the past, and they've made some pretty cheap stuff. So, it depends. Why do people love clip speakers? What makes them different? I already answered that. I don't have a wife. Okay. I think because of horns. Yes, so yeah, the horns. John Sweeta says, what I was saying about the BenQ, they shouldn't be used they shouldn't be used on a desktop. Electrostatic speakers, they need to have space. I think sitting them on a stand in your main living room with a couple of subwoofers. You know what? I've I've tried it. I've tried it in uh, different rooms. I think the problem with these Here's, here's how you can make it work. If you really were adamant about getting these BenQs to work, you need to cross them over. You need to make sure that they're not playing frequencies that they cannot handle. And with the size of these things, that's going to be pretty up there. Uh, you know, typically you want to cross over around 80 hertz. I would say you'd probably want to cross these over higher, like 120, 150. You know what I mean? Pretty high up in order to be able to turn them up loud enough so that it would make sense in your living room. Uh, right. What else? What else? What else? Uh, square driver speakers. Nick Fowler says probably just conservatively rated at 80 hertz. I have a hard time trusting bookshelves that are that too low. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing I, I was wondering is if the LS50s were just conservative, conservatively rated, kind of like how like the German manufacturers of cars they'll rate their their car at like 400 horsepower, but it's actually like closer to 500. So they underrate. I'm wondering if that's the case. Um, let's see here. J -Lo, too harsh sound. How do you feel about acoustic speaker? Okay, I haven't seen any acoustic speaker brands. Acoustic re audio research. Um, yeah, I haven't. I don't have an opinion on those right now. They're also great if you have a tube amp. Okay, should be if you DSP or ASP. Okay. Which is really handy. Sony stuff is solid. Nice stream. Good night. Uh, like a fun, ugly girlfriend, Sony. <laughs> uh, the Fluence AI60 is are, are you planning to review them anytime soon? Yes, Charles. Yes, yes, yes. As soon as they get here, I'll take a photo, I'll post it, and uh, you'll be able to see them. John Sweeta, forget Focal, try Cuba Audio, and you won't regret it. I'm going to say, okay. Uh, Joe and Tell, what's up? Pro, pro, Procons Tech Center, what's up? Uh, what are some of the best deals you got on Craigslist? What are some of the best deals I got on Craigslist? Uh -huh. You guys got to check the Craigslist then, right? You have to live near here, too. Uh, Matt Hilty, the LS50s do roll off my base sub at 70 to 72 hertz. All right, I think that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm always here. I'm always in the comments, so I do my best to try to answer as many of those comments as possible. It's getting harder and harder now just because the channel is growing and I'm getting hundreds of comments a day. And so I try to take my time and try to answer all of them. But if I can't, then, uh, you know, try to join these live streams and uh, that's it. Anyway, it's been a while and I had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time too. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.